Yo, what is up, uh, programmers, coders, people that watch these videos? Uh, my channel is growing like so much, and I thank you guys a lot for watching these and liking and subscribing because it's crazy. I got like 20k subs in the past like few weeks, so uh, we're gonna keep it going. This is another coding interview question. Code Signal has uh, listed this as asked by Amazon, LinkedIn, Facebook, Microsoft, and Apple. So a ton of huge companies, great companies as well. Uh, you know, it, it could be asked anywhere because the interviewer usually picks the question, but it's a good question. I love this question. We are gonna be doing it. It's product of array except self. We're gonna move over to leak code for this one. It's the same question as the one on code signal, but I just like leak code. You know, I'm a, I came from leak code. I gotta stick with my roots. And uh, yeah, I just like the UI better. So whenever I get to I get a chance to do it on Lead Code, I'm gonna do it. But uh, yeah, we're gonna do the slideshows and stuff too. So let's just let's just start. Let's get into it. So here's our problem today: given an array nums of n integers where n is greater than one, return an array output such that output of i is equal to the product of all elements in nums except nums of i. All right, so this just means our input is going to be an array of numbers, right? It doesn't have to be sorted. It could have negatives and positives. We just know that it's not going to be an empty array. And so what we do is we take this input, and for each index in that input, the corresponding or the same index in the output array is going to be the product of every other element in the input array. So you could see in this example that uh, the first element of the output array is going to be the product of everything in the input array but the first element. So the product of the second, third, and fourth elements. And so the second element in the output will be the product of the first, third, and fourth element but not the second element of the input. And we can see how this pattern continues where, you know, the third element's the product of everything but the third element, fourth element's product of everything but the fourth element. All right, so let's think of an algorithm for how we get from this input to this output. So just first, right off of the top of my head, what I was thinking is you loop through the input array and you calculate the product of all of these numbers, you know, multiplied by each other. So in this case, one times two times three times four. And then once you have that product, you can then loop through the array once again and divide by each number. So this would be 2n, a of 2n, which is linear, which is perfect, great time complexity, that's what we're striving for. Um, first loop is linear, second loop is linear, right? Perfect. The only problem with this solution, this solution works great, right? The only problem with this solution is, in the problem, we're gonna be told we're not allowed to use division, which really sucks, because that makes it a whole lot harder. So what can we do if we cannot use division? This problem in particular takes a little bit of clever minded thinking or just attention to detail and understanding algorithms a little bit. So the first thing you're gonna come to realize is this is impossible, you can't do this in one loop. Like I can't just know what's coming after the one you know, I don't know how many elements are in the array or anything like that. So it's gonna be impossible. We need to do more than one loop. The second thing that you'll come to realize is that to solve this problem, you need to know this, is that what's gonna get outputted for you know each element is the product of everything to the left of it times the product of everything to the right of it, which makes sense if you think about it. It just takes a little bit of clever thinking, you know, right? You don't, it's not something you just intuitively think of, but I mean, you just look at two and you just think, well, it's just the product of everything else. You don't think, oh, it's the product of everything to the left times the product of everything to the right. And you guys can verify that claim on its own, right? It's two, the product of everything to the left times the product of everything to the right. So 12 times one, 12, right? So that's what we're getting in the output. You can check that for three, four, and one. Uh, one has nothing to the left. So it'd be two times three times four, 24, et cetera. Keep going. So what we're going to end up doing is a few loops, right? One loop is going to calculate all of the left products, and one loop is going to calculate all of the right products, and then the final loop is going to multiply the left products and the right products together to get our final output values. All right, so let's try our new method of left and right products. So we're going to fill up our left products array first, so we're going to loop through our array, and for each element, we're going to take 
whatever's to the left of it the product of that. So the first element has nothing to the left of it, so the product is just going to be 1. The second element just has a 1 to the left of it, so the product is still going to be 1. Now the third element has a 2 and a 1, so 2 times 1 is 2. Now the fourth element has a 1, 2, and 3 to the left of it, so it's going to be 1 times 2 times 3, which is 6. So this would be our left products array after we loop through our input. All right, so let's fill up our right products array now. Uh, this is everything, the product of everything to the right of the current element, and you go backwards through the array this time. So we're going to be starting at 4. To the right of 4 is nothing, so we're just going to put a 1. Uh, to the right of 3 is a 4, so we're going to put a 4. To the right of 2 is a 3 and a 4, so we're going to put a 12. And to the right of 1 is a 2 times 3 times 4, that is a 24. So we've now filled up both our left products and right products arrays. So the final step of this algorithm is to loop through and multiply each element of the left products array by each element of the right products array, and that will give us the correct final answer. So we're going to do 24 times 1, so that is 24. Then we're going to do 12 times 1, that is 12. Then we're going to do 4 times 2, that is 8. And then we're going to do 6 times 1, that is 6. And that is the exact answer that we wanted, so this algorithm clearly works. This is a really good algorithm, and this is three separate loops. Uh, so it's O of 3n. It has does have some extra space, so we do have some extra arrays. Uh, but yeah, it's still a good algorithm, good time complexity, and doesn't use division. So let's look at this in code now. All right, so here's the code for that solution. We have our three different arrays. One is the final output, one is the left products, one is the right products, and of course we do have that uh, our input array, right? So we are looping through. We're doing the first loop to fill up the left products array. We initialize the first element of the left products array with a one because there's nothing to the left of the first element. We initialize the last element of the right products array to a one because there's nothing to the right of the last element. So the first loop is just a loop forward uh, we're calculating each element of the left products array by just taking the next element we see and multiplying it by the previous product in the left products array. Pretty straightforward. Then we move on to the loop backwards and we calculate the right products by the next element we see going backwards by the previous element in the right products array. And then the final loop is pretty straightforward. It's just the next element in the output array is just left products of i times right products of i. So pretty straightforward. Overall, once again, three linear loops. So O of 3n, which is optimal time complexity because we drop the constants. However, there is extra space here that we can get rid of. We don't need this extra space. And in fact, we'll actually be encouraged not to use this extra space in a follow-up. It says, could you solve this with constant space? The output array does not count as extra space. So we can use an output array, but we don't want these left and right products arrays. And so there is a way to do this with constant space, get rid of the left and right products arrays. Uh, it is essentially the exact same idea, same solution. The only thing is we're going to use our output array. So we have this single output array. We're going to use it to store all of the left products. So we set the first element to one, just like the left products array. We loop through from zero, the first element to the end, and we calculate all the left products. And then for the right products, we just use a variable. So we don't need that extra array because we fill up the left products with our output array. We use a variable for the right products, and then we actually just calculate the output on the fly by multiplying by the right products variable. So the variable just gets calculated the same as we did with the right products array. Um, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. It's the same exact idea. Gets rid of that extra space. This is a linear time solution. So that's it. This is a super famous problem. This gets asked all the times. I've actually been asked this in multiple interviews. It's a very popular question. I like the question. It makes you think it has a little bit of, you know, it shows you're clever if you can come up with this. And uh, it's not too difficult like some of these other problems. So I think this is a great problem. 
Um, let me know if you guys have any other solutions that are clever or cool. Let me know if I messed up on anything or any problems you want me to do next. Once again, I appreciate people that are watching and supporting. Please like and subscribe to the video because it helps me grow. And if you want, I have Patreon and Discord in the description. I have a study guide on my Patreon and you know, a bunch of people are in my Discord and helping each other out all the time. So feel free to join those as well. Thank you guys for watching and that is it. I will see you in the next coding challenge. That's it. Peace.